I, I know. But you know, we have regulations on things that market and industry would like to do. And yet we're told we can't do them because it's not politically sensitive. You can't irradiate food, it has the word radiation. Radiation makes you think of nukes, and I'm anti-nuclear weapons. It's like, you moron! Do you, you have a fish taken home, don't you? Well, of course I do. I'm a politician. Okay, well, you have a fish. I bet the thing passes through several filters, right? And I bet it goes through this ultraviolet irradiating energy in order to kill the bacteria and break down their cell walls, doesn't it? Well, yes, of course, but I'm not eating my fish. But this idea that they can stand in the way of progress, which is the most apocalyptic thing in the world. You know, you think of a car. A car is actually relatively cheap. But think about how much money that, that is in taxes and how much profit the actual company, the people who actually did the work, are getting off of it. I say this to people who are oil people all the time. The people who say oil is incredibly expensive, and it is. It's twice as cheap as water. Of course it's expensive. Do you realize 20% of the cost in a gallon of gasoline that you buy is pure taxes? And the profit margin for the company that produced it, they drilled it out of the ground, they got into a tanker, they shipped it across an ocean, they unloaded it onto a dock, they pumped it into a filling station, got brought by $100,000 trucks to a refining station, went through five years of refining with the most highly paid, highly skilled engineers and chemical scientists in the world, and got brought to your tank near you, free of fear that you'll get blown up injecting it into your tank. And they're taking 7% profit. The government makes three times more on gasoline, yet we complain about the companies that bring it to us. In college, we're taught that's a wonderful thing to do. How progressive, how enlightened are you? You know, I, I, because I didn't prepare much of anything, I was wondering if I could take a bit of your time. How many of you guys listen to Brian Sussman? Me too. I did this piece for him um, in Maestro. Oh, right here. <laughs> Taking a, a siesta. It's the first track on that. I did this piece after I failed the physics exam, I was feeling so bad about myself. And I was driving home and I realized, I almost hit myself, I said, what the hell am I doing being upset? You know, I live in the United States of America. With all of its imperfections, it's still the best thing that we got going. I said, I have to worry about roadside bombs, misfires as I drive home. I have to worry about the government coming and bulldozing down my house for arbitrary reasons like they do in Kenya. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. I know I'll have a bed to sleep in tonight. I know I have access to 24-7 power. And I thought, you know, at my age, 19 years old, my grandfather was off in Luxembourg fighting against the Nazis in the December of 1944 in the Battle of the Bulge. And what have I ever done sort of thing? And so I created this piece to sort of acknowledge what liberty is to me and the men who defended it. And when I say that, I say that sort of loosely because you'll hear FDR in there, you'll hear Bush in there, you'll hear everyone but Jimmy Carter, Clinton, and Nixon. And the reason why is because for all of their misfortunes and bad doings in certain areas, they did get it right some of the time in certain areas. And so I only have them speaking on that. But this is a musical compilation slash tributes. Brian Sussman calls it a historical documentary piece of audio. But please enjoy it. It's um, called In the Defense of Liberty, and the first voice you'll hear is General Douglas MacArthur saying goodbye to Congress after he was fired for attempting to win the Korean War. We'll just put it that way. So, one second, here you go. Here are centered the hopes and aspirations and faith of the entire human race. I do not stand here as advocate for any partisan cause, for the issues are fundamental and reach quite beyond the realm of partisan consideration. They must be resolved on the highest plane of national interest if our course is to prove sound and our future protected. I trust, therefore, that you will do me the justice of receiving that which I have to say as solely expressing the considered viewpoint of a fellow American. I address you with neither rancor nor bitterness in the fading twilight of life with but one purpose in mind, to serve my country.